Today, in Chemistry in Context, we're going to synthesize iodoform by the haliform reaction. Now first, let's get our goggles on, and now we can get to the lab. Now that we've seen the reaction, we can consider the mechanism of it and we can put it into context. We've performed the haliform reaction. It's actually the reaction of any methyl ketone, which in this case was acetone, with a halogen, in our case iodine, and the addition of a strong aqueous base, or sodium hydroxide as we did. So for the mechanism of that, we had our acetone molecule. And those alpha hydrogens are actually slightly acidic. For reference, the pKa is about 19. So the strong base will actually abstract one of those alpha hydrogens. That leaves those two electrons in the sigma bond to move electron density up, forming an enolate intermediate. Now that enolate intermediate is actually an extremely powerful nucleophile. And that powerful nucleophile will actually cause what's known as a spontaneous dipole moment with that halogen molecule. It will cause one of the atoms to actually obtain a partially positive charge, the other one a partially negative charge. So our nucleophile is going to move the electron density down and attack that partially positive halogen molecule, kicking off the other one as iodide in our case. And ultimately, that will actually return us to our acetone molecule, except we've replaced one of those alpha hydrogens with an iodo substituent. This first step that we've just done is known as preliminary enolization. It's because it's the first time we formed that enolate intermediate. This is the rate determining step. After this, the reaction will proceed much faster. But why? It's because as we've added that iodide molecule, that iodo substituent, those alpha hydrogens are more acidic. So that nucleophilic hydroxide anion is going to be drawn even more powerfully to those alpha hydrogens. So the entire process, after it's completed, after the exhaustive halogenation is completed, will yield us the acetone molecule with three iodo substituents on one of the alpha ends. Ultimately, we're going to have that hydroxide anion attack that carbonyl carbon in a process known as nucleophilic acyl substitution. That will then yield what's known as a tetrahedral alkoxide intermediate. That's not particularly stable, having the negative charge on the oxygen, the alkoxide, not very stable. So the electron density is going to move down, in doing so, kicking off a good leaving group something that can stabilize that negative charge, which in our case is actually our carbon triiodide anion. So that will produce a carboxylic acid. In our case, since we used acetone, it will actually produce ethanoic acid or vinegar. It will also produce a Lewis base, our good leaving group. 
which is actually a carbon triiodide anion. That's a base, right? So we have our base and our acid. Those two will react. The base will abstract a hydrogen from that acid. In doing so, our carboxylic acid will go off and form a carboxylate salt with our sodium cation from the strong base. So our carbon triiodide will actually go and become our iodophore molecule, which is a yellow precipitant. This reaction can actually also be used as a qualitative test for methyl ketones. A positive test will yield iodoform, which is a very distinct yellow precipitant. So this has been Chemistry in Context. We'll see you next time, and stay safe.